with tea quilts and today we're doing the disappearing hourglass quilt block it became popular with Missouri Star Quilt Company and she has a video on this as well I will put it in the comment sections so that you can go see her video I for my gill we're doing this block and we need two fabrics we need a dark blue for the background tone on tone and then we can use any print in the red orange yellow or green range so i've chosen this yellow print basically we're going to put both 10 inch squares right sides together and then when we get to our sewing machine we're going to sew one quarter of an inch all the way around the outside perimeter of this uh, fabric stack so I only need two fabrics and they both need to be 10 inch squares. So I will go sew this square and then I will come back and show you the next step. I'm back and I have my block sewn around all of the edges. And so the next step is to cut diagonally from corner to corner in both directions. So now I will end up with four half square triangles. So I am going to go press these and then I will come back and square them up. Okay, so I have my half square triangles. Now the gill wants these at six and three fourths. If I was doing this block, I would actually trim this block at six and a half. That way when I put it together, I'd have a block that's 12 and a half inches unfinished. So, but I am just going to go ahead and leave these at six and three fourths like the gill wands. The next step is to place these units so that they make an hourglass unit. So basic design, you have two of the darks pointing in and then you have two of the yellows pointing in to make a square on square. I mean to make a square and a square on point. So that's our next step. I will go sew that and then I will come back with the next step. I'm back. I have my hourglass block sewn and I also have cut all my dog ears off the block. And on the back side I've just um, pressed my seams for the block. Now the next step is to cut this into a nine patch. So I'm going to cut four and one quarter from the outside edges on both sides, four and one quarter from the top and bottom. And I can't do that with the camera being here, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back and I've cut my units. And the great thing about the disappearing hourglass as well as the disappearing pinwheel block is that you can switch these blocks and put them into any configuration that you like. Now I'm working with my gill, so I'm going to use the method that they are using. And then as a bonus for watching this video, at the end I'm going to show you a design board that I use in one of my lectures where I have done this technique and have different settings for the block. So stay tuned to the end. So the next thing that we do is we flip pieces and then we sew it back together. So for the corners, they want the points going out. Uh -oh. Look like I didn't cut through this one all the way. Just cut it off. Put this one so they want all of the points 
from the outside edges turned out. So I'm flipping these 180 degrees. And then for the insides, they also want those flipped around. So I take this, turn it on all four. And so then also we're going to turn the center square one quarter turn. So this is the block that they want us to turn into the gill. I will sew this block together, come back with the finished block, and then I will show you some other options. So here is my finished hourglass block, and I will post the photo at the end. Um, I do have to warn you though that these, all of these edges are on the bias. So please be careful when you are pressing your blocks because that will make a big difference. So as promised, I'm going to just show you my display board for my disappearing hourglass and pinwheel blocks. And in the first two columns here, I have my hourglass blocks. So at the top here is my hourglass block made with two fabrics. And then over here is my hourglass block made with three fabrics. And then underneath each one are different setting options that you can do when you rearrange the pieces. Today we just made this setting here with the larger block in the blue and gold. But you could also make this block with those same units as well as this block and then what I did in the next column is I showed you this same block with three fabrics and how it would look if you chose to use three fabrics in your block so again all the way down this fab this block is the same as this block but it uses three fabrics instead of two and please ignore my phone ringing in the background and then over on the other side, you could have put these half square triangles into a pinwheel block. So I'm showing you the pinwheel block made with two fabrics and then a pinwheel block made with three fabrics. And then as you go down, you can see the difference in using two fabrics over three across from each other all the way down. I hope you enjoyed this video and the bonus footage and that you stayed to the end so that you could see this extra piece here that I have. And please subscribe to my channel and thumbs up this video and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.